This is the $500 MetaQuest 3. It's an AR and VR headset that came out last year. And this, my friends, is the $3,500 Apple Vision Pro that came out in early February. And there are five things that makes these headsets vastly different and two things that are pretty similar. In this video, I'll tell you if the Vision Pro is worth seven times the price of the Quest 3. Let's get it in. So reason number one, price. The Quest 3 headset is made by Meta. It starts at $500 for 128 gigabytes of storage with the option to upgrade to 512 for an extra $150, which brings the total maximum price to $650. It's made from a mostly plastic design with cameras along the front, allowing for pass-through augmented reality. It also comes with controllers to help you navigate the menus and play games. The controllers are not required for a lot of applications as the front cameras have hand tracking, but controllers definitely makes using it a lot easier for me. The Apple Vision Pro is made by Apple. It's $3,500, which gets you 256 gigabytes of storage. You can upgrade to 512 or one terabyte for a maximum price of $3,900. Although the capabilities of tech in these headsets are different, just looking at it from a purely financial standpoint, the Quest 3 provides more value for the money. The Quest 3 features dual LCDs with a resolution of 2064 by 2208 pixels per eye with up to 120 frames per second. It has eight gigabytes of RAM and 110 degree field of view, which gives you a sense of wideness when looking through it. Battery life is between hour and a half or three hours depending on usage. It also charges via USB-C. Apple Vision Pro has two 1.41 inch micro LED displays delivering a total of 23 megapixels across both displays. In terms of resolution, it converts to 5338 pixels in width by 4153 at height. And this is pixels per eye. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and the field of view is not disclosed by Apple, but it is more narrow than the Quest. It has spatial audio built in. It charges with a battery pack that's completely external and that's USB-C in and it's a proprietary connector out. You can expect around two and a half to three and a half hours of battery life. A few things worth mentioning from these specs is that Apple Vision Pro has double the RAM, more than double the resolution, way more sensors and cameras, and also a bigger battery life. But one of the trade-offs is that you have this external battery pack that you always have to lug around with you and it's not all contained to one headset. Also, when looking at size, the Quest 3 is actually a little bit bigger, but once again, it has a built-in battery. Now, comparing spec to spec, obviously Apple Vision Pro wins, hands down, and in better for that price. Now, I do have a reason to pick the Quest over the Apple Vision Pro, and this one is very important, and that's comfort. So the MetaQuest 3 has a pretty simple head strap. It goes around your head and then it goes up the middle. This provides a nice secure fit, but over time it can get a bit front heavy. I can wear the headset for about an hour of active work before I have any discomfort. The Apple Vision Pro comes with a pre-installed solo headband, and they also tossed in a head strap that goes over the top. This one, however, connects to your head horizontally. The solo loop to me does a great job if you're on the headset for only a few minutes sitting down and not getting active. But once you become more active or you're walking around, you really start to feel the weight of the unit with this. You can dial in the tension with this wheel. The second strap that it comes with, I found to be much more comfortable. It holds the weight better, and it's something that I've worn for up to two hours without any issues at all. So moving forward, this has been my new default strap. I am definitely surprised that the Apple Vision Pro is not more comfortable after the whole fitting process that you do on your phone and also when you go into the store. That is a big concern for me moving forward if it's something I'm going to actually want to wear. The Quest 3 definitely puts you into a virtual world. And from there, you're able to launch apps or your activities. But before you do that, you need to draw a boundary around your workspace. Drawing the boundary isn't a big deal, but it definitely slows down the process of getting into your environment. Once you have that done, you have a pretty simple UI that is intuitive to use. You can use your fingers to poke buttons or use the controllers to select things. This environment can move around in spatial just like Vision Pro, but you are limited to how many screens you can move in that space. And also when moving windows around, it's not as fluid, it's a little bit chunky. You can send messages to people, screen record, and there are thousands of apps available on the Meta Store. Now, once you launch an app, 
It takes over your whole experience and there's no way to run more than one app at a time. It is definitely a singular app experience. The Apple Vision Pro does the same thing, but it does focus on AR a bit more than 100% VR. You can still see your environment around you, and that's typically how most people use the headset. Now, there is a way to go 100% immersion, which would then basically blank out everything but the apps you are using. It uses cameras to see your world, and then it puts the image into your headset, just like the Quest. The first time you use it, you need to run through a three to five minute setup process, scanning your hands and measuring your eyes. Now, once that is done, you are in the interface. The layout is much more simpler than the Quest 3, where you have rows of apps with multiple pages, just like a big iPad. As of right now, there aren't any customizations here at all. So all the apps are laid out, there's no additional folders, and it's all alphabetical order. The way you select something, you just look at it and pinch your fingers together. The cameras on the headset can see your hands pretty much anywhere you're at. So when you pinch your fingers, it registers it. When you launch apps, they are in this environment and you can launch several apps and have them in different spots in your environment. You can even leave apps open in different rooms, like putting a digital TV in a room that doesn't have a TV. Or on FaceTime, you can walk away and that box is still in that space. So when we talk about interface, that has to go to the Apple Vision Pro due to the fact you can run more than one app at a time. You can move them wherever you want and you can install iPhone and iPad apps on there too, which expands the app library greatly day one. Now that being said, there are still millions of consumers who'd prefer the Quest 3 for this next feature that is available software. Now the Quest 3 is really made for games. There is an amazing library of games and some of the games on there are so fun you can play them for countless hours. There's also great workout apps. Superhuman was a workout app that I used a lot. I've registered over 35 hours in that app alone. And I've also bought over 15 games that I've had a lot of fun with. As far as other apps, that could be hit or miss. Also watching video on here can be a good experience, but some of the apps either are outdated or not optimized for this view experience, which makes the content blurry and grainy at times. What the Vision Pro lacks in quantity, they make up for it in quality. The apps that are designed for Vision Pro, the big ones like Disney Plus or NBA are fantastic. And once you use it, you really start to get it. It gives you a glimpse of what to expect in the future for Vision Pro. And honestly, the Quest 3 doesn't have anything that will come close to this at all. To truly understand it, you should do a Vision Pro demo at an Apple store. And I can guarantee you, you'll say, Oh, now I get it. Also the pass-through mode, which is when you can see your environment, it does a great job at showing your environment, but there are still some issues viewing screens. So if you get a text message or you wanna look at another like TV, for example, you can't. Also, if you don't have great lighting in your house, the immersiveness is lost as you can start to see pixels and other digital elements. Apple Vision Pro and good lighting, the pass-through is absolutely amazing. It is stunning and, and everyone who puts it on says the same thing. They say, oh, wow, like, wow. But just like the MetaQuest 3, when it goes into lower light, it does lose quality. I will say the Apple Vision Pro can do better in low light than the MetaQuest 3, but they both kind of snap you back into reality that you're wearing a headset. You know, as I mentioned before, not all apps are designed for Vision Pro, but if you put an app on here that is not made for it, you can still use it, you can still put it in your environment, all those things, but the buttons are not laid out for it and it does get a little bit tough to use. I truly hate to say it, but Meta definitely has some catching up to do as Apple came in with the Haymaker with the first headset. The Quest today is a more complete headset. It's designed for gaming with some unique apps sprinkled in and also giving you a controller to use the interface makes it more accessible for people. If you want the best technology in a headset and you want to experience what a headset could be, obviously get an Apple Vision Pro. If you want the best headset available today and one that won't break the bank, get a MetaQuest 3. So if you're even slightly considering buying the Apple Vision Pro, you want to watch my full video of the experience of buying one of these things. I documented the entire process on release day and I'll show you exactly what the setup looks like.